Right, it's been a while. It's been actually a month, more or less, since I've managed to make one of these videos. I apologize for that, but let's get into it. Let's not waste any more time. The 04 War returns. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another 04 War video, a final return of an 04 War video. I do apologise. I was away a few weeks. Work interrupted the screen, the streaming schedule, which interrupts the video schedule. Hope you guys have enjoyed the AW videos. In the meantime, um, may yeah, if you've missed them, make sure you go and watch them. Stuart's been doing his own stuff on his channel. Um, I will try and leave a link in the description below, so please do go and watch his stuff. But tonight we're moving on from Great American Bash, which means we're moving towards the King of the Ring, baby. That's right, we're doing the King of the Ring. We are going to start setting it up on Raw and SmackDown. There are going to be brackets for both brands and meet, uh, meet in the middle, basically. So the winner of the SmackDown bracket and the winner of the Raw bracket will go one-on-one -on -one at King of the Ring. Who will get there? Let's find out tonight. Big night. Big night on Raw and a big night on SmackDown. Let's go. All right, Monday Night Raw comes from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. And we kick off on the pre-show, Matt Hardy beating the Hurricane. Now, the Hurricane fans out there will be crying into their version one mugs, I'm telling you. Because by, by this point, Matt Hardy's won them over in this match. This is the idea. I mean, it's not televised. It's on the pre-show. But 61, solid. Matt yeah, Hardy I'm... is a is a solid hand. I know, but I just want to, when I think about this, I think the, the, the decline of the hurricane. <laughs> it's, been, it's just the idea that he was, uh, your first month, fighting for the WWE Championship, and now look at him. He was a jobber. Job of the job all along. Who knew that? Uh, right, okay, second pre-show match. Uh, we're going to have the British Bruisers get a win over Conway and Rico. I didn't have a plate on on the main card tonight for the British Bruisers. I thought, let's just stick them out there getting a win. And they, I mean, they carried Conway and Rico to a pretty good match, actually. 74 from Regal. I will, I mean, uh, I haven't said this on video yet, but next week we're going to see William Regal versus Randy Orton in the King of the Ring. It'll be confirmed in the show later. But my God, Regal might just win the lot. I'm telling you. He could. Or he could just... I, if I feel winning Regal, I've got a feeling he's going to... It's going to be a brutal affair. And that wasn't a pun. That was literally how I feel. <laughs> it's going to be... That match would literally be... I wouldn't be surprised if Randy Orton gets busted up. That's how brutal I think that match is going to be. So and, it's, a good, uh, it's a good... It sounds like a match though. Shout out to the finisher that we added for the British Bruisers, the Rule Britannia. Right. Okay. 65. Let's kick off the main show, though. Let's kick off with a man who last night at Great American Bash, which feels like a long time ago, it feels like. But he really was. does. Um, Shawn Michaels won the WWE Championship. He is going to open the show tonight wondering what's next. I'm just going to press next. For a... <laughs> no surprise there. I mean... I mean, we're back, boys. We're back. Um, 100 rate segment. Shawn Michaels wonders what's next. He's since winning the WWE Championship from Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, he's took on a lot of top talent, but nothing quite as personal as what happened over the last month with JBL. But that's in the back seat. That's in the mirror. What's happening going forward? When he's interrupted by the returning. Goldberg. We haven't seen Goldberg for a little while, if you remember. He's been, well, creatively not used. Um, so he's back. That's he seems to make version. the challenge to Shawn Michaels. They get face to face. No words are said. These two have already gone one on one before. Remember No Way Out when uh, Shawn Michaels beat Goldberg to get the WrestleMania shot. Goldberg has never quite forgotten that one. But, Gong. Lights go out, Taker appears in the ring, and it's very clear that these two want their titles shot. Shawn Michaels gets on the mic and says, listen, I get it, you guys want a title shot, but I want this title to be the thing that everyone wants. 
and I want you guys to earn it. So how's about this? I got an idea. I want to see Goldberg versus The Undertaker. And the winner will get a shot at King of the Ring. Randy Savage will confirm it later because he's the general yeah. manager. But Taker's call, uh, sorry, Sean's calling the shot. We're doing Taker versus Goldberg in the main event because I can. Because I can. You know, right, obviously in 04, I don't think there would be any controversy, but if this was on the internet now, but you've done that on a free-to-air TV show. The biggest match. But I brought it to you. I'm intrigued to see if it does well. But... The question is, will it have a clean finish? Oh, now you've said it. <laughs> now you've said it. <laughs> 100 race segment. Great start. We immediately then go backstage where JBL enters the office of Randy Savage for a 97. We're flying. It's because uh, Cena's in there. That's why. Nothing, nothing to do JBL. JBL that's, complains that's to Savage and says, these two can't just walk in and take my opportunity. As a former champion, I have a right to a rematch. Randy Savage says, after what you've done over the last month, going behind my back to get a title shot? Hell no. John Cena walks in at that moment in time, laughs at JBL in his face, and says, you know what, you're right, Randy. Some people just don't deserve to be a champion, do they? JBL walks off in a huff. Cena may have just made an enemy for himself there. Yeah, I just I just find it like an area towards the 04. JBL, John Cena. That, that, that's got that's got potential to be a very interesting feud if it's what's happening. But yeah, Who knows? Um, we'll see. Find out. Night seven, good stuff. Let's go to the first in-ring content of the night on the show. We're going to blow off the Booker T AJ uh, versus Caden Jindrak feud with a big tag match. Look, it's time to move Jindrak at the wheelchair. He's he's ready to go now, according to the doctors. So here we go. The match itself, seventy-four. Wow. That's much better than I expect that to be. Main, Booker T, is that 85, I see. Yeah, Booker T put in an 85. Mad. Not Mad. bad for AJ, though. There's He's a reason we put in Booker and AJ together for a bit. Booker's shine on AJ Styles, very nice. AJ gets the win, though. Garrison Cade pinned with a Styles clash, 74. Booker T and AJ Styles now as a well-woven tag team. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm going with it. So, sounds right. That's the idea we're putting together. You know what? As a tag team, they've picked up a couple of wins. They've beaten their rivals here. What's next for Booker T and AJ Styles? Well, Booker T is going to tell AJ Styles what's next after the match. Makes it clear with his uh, gesture. Booker T uh, tells AJ Styles that it's time to challenge for some gold. A little bit of a thinly vain challenge that the new the, the still WWE tag team champions world tag team champions even sorry Stu uh, Big Show and Jamie Noble <laughs> 80 for this is fine we're going to pair together Booker and AJ with the knockout artist I think it'll be a good little tag feud um, with Booker 85 Big Show sort of an eight, 85 level as well those two can oh. carry their partners into a good tag feud yeah and also I'm not giving you any ideas, but come on, you've got like a few and a random one-off match. You could do Big Show versus Booker T. I mean, there you go. I mean, we'll and see. then was it was, and then with Jamie Noble versus AJ Styles that actually I would think would do quite well. So I like that. That's a good feud. I like that idea. Right, let's uh, switch gears. Let's go to the Cruiserweight Gold Rush Tournament. We know we've got a final four of Paul London, Tajiri. Um, we've also got Maven and who was the other guy? No offense, Matt Hardy. Final four. One of Love those that. men will be getting a cruiserweight championship opportunity in the near future. Yeah. Let's find out who goes through to the final. Will it be Paul London? Will it be Tajiri? You guys know the answer. It is Paul London. Of course it is. We need, you know, a top baby face to go against Chavo. So Paul London as a contender. Is up there. Let's see what Maven and Matt Hardy can do next week. Sixty-five for a cruiserweight title for a cruiserweight division match. Hello, I'll not take bad. That. Not bad at all. I mean, it's better than the performances should be. I didn't give it a lot of time. Only six minutes. The four fifty splash. Paul London through to the final. A guy with untapped potential in ring, and uh, I am pleased at putting them in the cruiserweight division for a bit. I think it's working. Oh yeah, I mean to be fair, they didn't. I mean, in real life, they didn't really truly gave him a shot at the cruiserweight stuff. They really did they? I'm sure he never, he never got a shot at it anyway. Mm. 
I think it had, well, I think he had a couple of opportunities, but it was yeah, I know what you mean. He was never given major chances. Will he be given a chance? We'll find out in the main event, not the main event, sorry, in the final in a few weeks' time. Paul London books his place. But now that he's in the final, well, Chavo sees a threat. Let's go with. And Chavo and oh, 48, not great here. Chavo and Matt Morgan beat down Paul London. Spanky comes out for the save, but they beat him down too. Chavo Guerrero laying down the law on the Cruiserweight division. Don't get ahead of yourselves. You're never winning this title type of thing. Okay, so it's, it's, so it's laid, so the old-fashioned book of laying down the law. Like, literally like, yeah, you, you, you're doing all right, but you've got no chance if you, if you do face me yeah. type thing. Yeah, just put, okay. put him in his place. This next segment should do better. We're going to have Evolution come to the ring. Evolution come to the ring talking about what's next. Similar to what Shawn Michaels said earlier. Randy Orton says, look, he's no longer the United States champion. But he's not going to sit here and beat himself up about it. He's not going to bitch. He's not going to complain. Because it's the time of year where legends are made. Now, as the legend killer, Randy Orton thinks it's time to... Push that moniker away, or at least take a word out, because it's time that Randy Orton became a legend. It's time that Randy Orton became world champion, he says. Interesting. He says, right. he says the king of the ring bracket is confirmed. He says Randy Orton is part of it. He says Batista is part of it and he knows one way or another that one member of evolution will be facing the wwe champion at SummerSlam. before he can go any further he's interrupted by the united states champion john cena for a 100 way so, so oh, i thought you were going oh. dude. you got flair batista yeah you're gonna yeah. cena interrupts confidently last night he beat randy orton remember that he says evolution are wrong because the winner of the king of the ring is right here. The United States champion is in the tournament. And the reason that Cena is so confident is because the man he faces, he faces right now. This is when the fans would find out. Batista. It's Cena versus Batista. And it's next. We're not giving it the big push because it's the king of the ring. It's meant to be a surprise in the tournament. Like a, whoa, you're doing that? We're doing that. Cena, Batista. Who goes through... So the King of the Ring Raw semi-final. This is the way we're doing it. We're doing a Raw tournament. We're doing a SmackDown tournament. The winner of each tournament goes one-on-one -on -one at the King of the Ring pay-per-view. Will it be Cena or Batista through to the final four on the Raw brand? It will be Batista. Only for an 82. It's a little low. It's a yeah, little I low. I should have seen that from... Um, well, not the score, and that's like... Was it got so... And that was 86, both of them, right? 86 from both of them. I know, but look, Batista was suffering with an injury, so I did think it would suffer a little bit. The match had lack of psychology, so these two paired together is a bit of a problem with psychology. So maybe I should have scripted it, which I may mean, have helped. had, what, three? Three matches in, like they've ever had in their careers, isn't it? Yeah, and they've never been amazing, have they? Let's oh, be so, they've always been, so this is about right. But it's still pretty good. 82 for a middle-of-the-card match. Not a problem at all. Batista beats Cena. The United States champion loses on his first night as champion. I can hear the boos already, but look, look at the finish. Batista bomb after interference from JBL. Last, uh, sorry, earlier in the night, Cena made an, an enemy for himself. JBL, if he can't go after the WWE championship, he's got another piece of gold in his mind. 82, Batista through post-match. Well, JBL beats the hell out of John Cena for a 93. Hit three clotheslines from hell, really bloodies him open, and he power bombs him through the table just for the sake of it as well. Cena okay. gets his ass really handed nice. to him. Oh, yeah, just to point out one thing, just um, just to remind you, uh, I know it's easy to do because it's John Cena, but I'm sure. Did you say the US title or the IC title? I did, it's the IC title. I've been no. doing this all the time. Can we swap titles? <laughs> um, actually, I think. <laughs> 
don't, I don't actually... No, we're not swapping no, titles. No, 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 we can't oh, But the that. point is, I, just, I could have easily left you there, but I just thought... I appreciate I, I know, it. I know, I appreciate I know why it. you've done it, because John Cena's known to have the US title, and yeah. It's... yeah. Look, it's just the name of a title, so it's not too bad, but that's the idea. Ooh, don't be saying that. We're putting saying that. together the two Johns. We're putting together the two Johns for the Intercontinental title. There's, there's, a, there's a big... There's, there's a joke in there somewhere. Because obviously, <laughs> it, was it John Cena? And then it's like John Cena that kept... John Bradshaw, like, they kept saying to John Cena, he's big match John, so... Well, who, the, the... who will be big match John? Yeah, I guess we'll find out. The match isn't yeah. officially made, but you can see where we're heading. 93, some really good segments tonight. Let's see if the next one does it. We're going to have a Maven promo, so I don't think it'll be the same level. But a 59 ain't bad at all. Maven yeah. with a promo on Chavo Guerrero and kind of Matt Hardy. He says he's seen what Chavo's just done to Paul London. And next week, he'll be ready for anything. He'll be ready for Matt Hardy. He'll be ready for Shannon Moore. And he'll be ready for Chavo Guerrero. Maven calling his shot a little bit. And just a bit of a, just a, bit of a way to lead into next week. And it kind of makes sense. After you see Chavo take out Paul London, Maven... Will see that as a ah, that's a problem. He's going to do that to me next week, isn't he? Yeah. So like, but I did like the idea they're more Maven now than they ever done with. Then we were like, I mean, I mean, it's ever that taker thing. Pretty yeah, much yeah. did nothing with him. So I like the idea you're using him well. But yeah, I mean, it makes sense, wouldn't it? Like, you see someone attack someone because of being in a tournament, you'd be like, yeah, I'm, I've got to you know keep my guard up if if I do win type thing. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so it seems like we're, we're set for the night, right? We've, we, we know we're going to get another King of the Ring match. We've got a main event on the way. And the storylines are starting to set themselves up, right? What do you think? We're going to go to a Brock Lesnar promo for an 86. Talking about Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker and Goldberg. And Brock Lesnar is very, very, very unhappy. He says he knows he's been working with JBL but he doesn't want his work with JBL to take away from the fact that he is the beast incarnate. And last night at the Great American Bash, he took Undertaker to the very limit. And Taker took him to the very limit. But they aren't done. How can the Undertaker forget about him? How can he just try and move on? Uh-uh, Brock Lesnar isn't allowing it. How can Shawn Michaels forget about Brock Lesnar? You know, the guy that realistically should never have lost the WWE Championship. And Goldberg... Well, Goldberg is just Goldberg, you know? Brock Lesnar isn't worried about Goldberg. Brock Lesnar makes it clear he wants his title back. 86. Look, Shawn Michaels, Taker and Goldberg is it's a pretty good main event storyline, but <laughs> let's just throw Brock Lesnar in there as well, shall we? Well, well we could. We could the storyline, it makes sense, but also I like the idea that... If he, if he isn't involved, what can he really do with it at the moment? Unless you give him time off. But, yeah, exactly. So, and I, mean, I, I feel like I'm kind of flexing my main event muscle now. Just like, oh yeah, we'll stick them all in one storyline. Because I've got, I've got enough for everyone else. It's fine. Yeah, he's... Um, the, 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 the worst thing that could ever happen to the save <laughs> is a cocky Kyle. <laughs> the worst thing. Okay, let's see what's going on in the King of the Ring then. So we know Batista's through. Who will Batista face... In the semi-final of the Raw side, will it be Rey Mysterio or will it be A Train? I think you all know the answer to this one. I mean, it's Rey Mysterio only for a sixty-five against A Train. I mean, okay. Shocking decision there, putting it in, not letting AJ win. Uh, AJ, 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 no, A yeah. Train win. Yeah, yeah, yeah disgraceful. Yeah. But no, that's right. We're doing Rey versus uh, Batista. In the semi-final of the Raw side, so that should be an interesting match. Oh, there's so many layers to that match, yeah. <laughs> even, even uh, before yeah. even before that. But there's uh, so yeah. much layers. I like it. Uh, so yeah, Ray beats A Train in the West Coast Park. This was probably the slam dunk of the night, right? You, no, it makes sense. Having Ray go far in this tournament makes a lot of sense from the Raw side. A Train's a tag wrestler. 65 is a little low, if I'm honest, but. Ray versus I mean, Batista should be interesting if I mean, Batista's that, injury doesn't bring him down too much. Um, so does it, can you find out that? Like, you're curious what I brought that down, or do you think um, that's... Penalised for holding back, which, again, the game just decides that. Lack of associated storyline. I mean, it's got the King of the Ring storyline. Yeah, this game's so weird. I mean, I'm figuring that out with my own save. Yeah, oh, shit. You know. Anyway. Well, what happened? What happened? Um, yeah, I mean, like, 
there's a storyline. So whatever. Um, okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Stoops for, for like you're not going to get like slam dunks. And if 65 of a it's match sorry. like that would I'm be not, good. So I'm it's not fine. trusting this match for the show. I'm trusting the main event, which we're going to get to in just a second. Before it's we do, probably work. We go to. Randy Savage's office where he's got some old school announcements for next week. He's going to run through a few matches for next week and he reveals the rest of the King of the Ring bracket. We're going to be doing Randy Orton versus William Regal, which I mentioned earlier. We're also going to be doing Test versus the debut in Daniel Bryan. And I feel right when you say it. <laughs> main event next week on Raw, Shawn Michaels will team up with the team of Booker T and AJ Styles against the Knockout Artists and JBL. I was, I just, I was just about to say, like, what are you doing, like, the tag match, like, next week? But I was like, no, no. Like, that's a bit, that's a bit premature, but... That is a big tag match for next week, kind of. Teddy Long will be, Teddy Long will be proud of you. So, yeah, we just want to hype up some stuff for next week. And let's move on to the main event, then. Number one contenders. This is big, right? Taker and Goldberg. This is big. Who goes to the King of the Ring with Shawn Michaels waiting? Dreading it because it's, if you get this score high, I've got no hope of it. <laughs> now, long-term viewers of me will know exactly what I'm doing here because I've teased it. Taker and Goldberg gets an 88. Oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. That's low. That's oh, really low. Th thank you, game. I was worried that if, if if you if that main event was getting like mid nineties, then I it's just game over, isn't it? <laughs> Goldberg, so, Goldberg's the problem. If we're honest, Goldberg's the problem. Well, he's, a, he's lower than his pop. Taker puts in a ninety seven, but even he couldn't carry Goldberg. It was still the best match of the night, so it was the right call to be the main event. It's still a very yeah, good match. You. Not enough selling Sharon, but look at the finish. That's not right. the finish I booked. Game that is not the finish I put in the game either. What are you doing to me? I mean, I mean, all right, okay, so I guess the answer to that question is, what was the finish you wanted the game to do for Take you? Taker and Goldberg ends in a no contest when run down, when, when, when running down the aisle is Brock Lesnar. I teased it. He doesn't want to be forgotten in this title hunt. Goldberg and Taker aren't getting the shot, and he makes sure of it by making sure this match doesn't finish. F5 okay. for Taker, F5 for Goldberg. Sure, Michaels was on commentary, and he's not happy about it. I mean, surprised. I'm surprised you haven't done the whole F five the ref just to really put across how you know what you know, he can F if he can F five the ref if you want, no problem. Yeah, I mean, not, not to not to sound horrible, but it's just like if 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 he's going to be this unleashed beast, yeah. But he kind of I could see him being that kind of person that would like he's just like he's so annoyed that he's he's being forgotten. So he's like he's so he's like F five the ref like you, that would keep that would make you notice, wouldn't it? It would. So I like it. It would. Now, a lot of you will be saying, but what about the title picture? What does that mean? What's going to happen next week? Let's answer the question now, shall we? Shawn Michaels is going to leave his commentary desk position, which, if you remember, in 04, was actually at the top of the ramp, right? Yeah. And he walks backstage to find Randy Savage. We show that. And he says, listen, I don't want to mess about. I want all of them. Shawn Michaels wants... Taker, Brock, and Goldberg in one match for the WWE Championship. And Savage He's says, You're crazy, man. It's your funeral. And books it. Exactly. That, exactly. That's right. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, like the reaction, the reaction to that is just literally like, Yeah, Sean, are you crazy? Is, like, to go, that's the point. But, that is the point. Oh, He's crazy. I mean, He's I, going I would against you, like, potentially the three biggest stars. In the company, in a way. He wants to face them all at once. He's all at so... once. Oh, I'm intrigued. I'm so excited to see what you do with this. Stuff like that. But that's, that's that's crazy. But, okay, so I guess the answer to the question is, what, mid-90s for this show? <laughs> it's hard to call because the matches have kind of let it down, but we've had three 100 oh, rated segments. I, 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 I just want to be, and a 97. be close. So that's I'm any. hoping for like 94, but I, it's this game. It's going to be like a 60 knowing me. Let's find out. Monday Night Raw gets... 94. Thank you, game. Thank you for giving me what I asked for there. It's about yeah. right. It's about right. The matches were a letdown. Uh, no pressure then. You've got, as I say, three 100 segments, a 97, a 93, an 88, an 86. And the lowest thing on the show, that 48 could have really brought it down, but uh, it didn't. I'm pretty pleased. You can see where we're heading for King of the Ring. Next week, we'll follow it up. We've set those big matches up. And I can also reveal for next week... 
we're going to do a weigh-in. That's right, a weigh-in. An old-school <sighs> boxing-style weigh-in between Batista and Rey Mysterio. I mean, all I say to that, have you been watching Cody Rhodes recently? Like, with your, that sounds like a thing that Cody Rhodes did in AW. Is that what he got? It, it wasn't, to be fair. The whole point of it, and we'll get to no, it next week, sorry. is literally <laughs> to say, oh, Batista's big. Oh, Rey Mysterio's not, is he? That's so, we've got, so we've got to make sure we find out how how different of size they are. Okay, yes, okay. Yes. Anyway, but yeah. 94, nice good stuff. Good luck. Okay, SmackDown kicks off with Triple H cutting a promo and it went on for hours and there's nothing left. No, I'm joking. Um, Triple H cuts a promo talking about he wants to be done with Lance Storm, right, Stu? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the, the kind of thing I want to do here is just, yeah, obviously he's lost to him twice. He's just tired of Lance Storm because obviously he's lost him twice. So he's like, he's, he's, he's listening to the ring saying, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to be where I should be and actually be challenging for World Title or at least challenging for gold because Triple H, I need gold around my waist type situation. And um, just, to, just to put an icing on the cake that would be a thing I could see the crowd doing is they keep chanting Lance Storm when he says he wants to move on. Just because then it, because it's just the idea that he wants to move on. Hmm. But the, the crowd are like, because uh, they know, because every time he hits Lance Storm, it's, it's like, it's weird and angry, but it's basically like the old joke with Macbeth, Macbeth. You know, when you hear the word Macbeth, it just makes you go crazy. Like, like when you hear um, Lance Storm, it's like he just, it triggers something in his head that just makes him just not think straight. To be fair, really... Lance Storm triggers something in everyone's head, but hey ho. Um... And ironically, there's Stone Cold Steve Austin in this promo. I don't know where the joke is there. But um, yes, and then obviously after that, and then obviously. Uh, Randy Arvidi comes out, um, literally sitting there saying, um, that "I like the idea of Austin kind of coming out, the, suggesting, yeah, this guy is mental. He's, he's, um, he's uh, slim pickings. You could, you, if you went against him now, you could beat him. Type situation, right? Mm -hmm. So like using a bit of strategy here, and obviously, um, um, and obviously trying to mess with him a little bit with RVD kind of bringing up saying, well, I, I mean, I face you. I mean, you're gonna face." Um, going to be a situation that you, you know, if I, if you, if Lance, like the old Fino saying, if Lance Storm could beat you, you're not, I could beat you quite easily. And, um, yeah, and it kind of talks, it just said, yeah, do you want to face me for like, fan, I'm so confident because Austin's really bigged them up, right? Yeah. He's like, yeah, face, face with you as tight if you want. And, or are you, I, I, I'm proved that, are you an easy target like Stone Cold Steve Austin says? Or are you going to be the old, the old Triple H? And obviously, like Triple H doesn't hate the the idea that someone's trying to guilt him the way RVD and Steve Austin is. So like he goes like with a pissed off face, like yeah, you're on type situation. So, and yeah, so, so, so you're giving like, away Triple H and Van Dam on free TV, unbelievable. <laughs> I know. What, what kind of person does that kind of match on a free TV? I don't know. But... Let's go to the ring. Ninety five for a very good opening segment. Let's go to the ring women's division. Trish Stratus taking on Jacqueline for a 72. Excellent. I am very happy with that. That's very good. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, was it, it's a 73. What's well, Trish Stratus, isn't it? Oh, four. She's really good, doing well. Jacqueline, 56. Very good. Uh, nothing really crazy here in the sense of, like, any crazy spots or anything. It's just simple match. Trish, you know, Trish hit, hits the, uh, what's his satisfaction, gets the win there. It's... Yeah, it's just more to establish that Trish is, you know, she's teased the woman to beat. And it was Jacqueline's, you know. She ain't the lady to mess with. What, yeah, who, who very nice said. Victoria? Maybe. We get, yeah. we get off topic. Post-match. Yeah. Uh, yes, obviously after that, obviously as you would expect, Jacqueline, as we all know, is kind of a MO at this point. Is kind of like, you know, not happy so she takes Trish from behind. But then obviously we know from the feud we kind of done that really cool two I think two out of three falls match we done last time mm -hmm. we did SmackDown. So it's obviously Lita still got problems with Jacqueline, comes comes in for the save. And I like the idea that Tri Alita picks helps helps up Trish Dress. But then when she but when she's doing it, she's looking at that towel. So kind of sitting there going, showing like she's helping her friend, because obviously they're friends, but well, I think Lita's got uh, showing her intent. Well, what she, well, what well. she wants. What she wants. Let's go backstage. The former women's champion Molly Holly has a promo with Jazz by her side. Um, yeah. So obviously, uh, again, it seems like I'm just kind of setting up what happened last week. Um, yes. Obviously, uh, there's still she's still got a problem with Gal Kim. Obviously, she 
left the group. So, and she's kind of, and obviously, I think in the Great American Bash, obviously, the whole thing, to set the, the ending situation. Um, but um, yeah, she's just tired of Gail Kim. I mean, she needs to end this once and for all. She needs to end this, the Gail Kim problem, if you want, if, as you will. And I like the idea that it sounds like Molly Holly's going to go, oh, I'm going to take her out. And then all of a sudden, she's like, oh, wait, no, Jazz, you're taking her out. And I like the idea, Jazz going, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? Like, like the idea that she kind of like, she goes after Gail Kim, but she still kind of respects Gail Kim because right. they were like partners for a while. So I like the idea that basically like, yeah, you're going to face her next week and you're going to take her out. Um, but I just like the idea of Jazz going like not happy with this because she kind of just kind of respects Gail Kim type situation. I see what happens there. That should so, be interesting. By the way, let's just, sorry, we're going to have to cut backstage. Somebody's beating up one of our staff members. What the, what is that? <laughs> Very nicely done. I like that. Yes. Um, yeah, obviously, I didn't know. Mick Foley, look at him. He's that thumbs up. Pretty much is how I feel right now with that score. <laughs> Got to be honest. Trust in Mick. Trust in Mick. Yep. Yeah. Trust. Uh, was it trust me? Yeah. Um, anyway, but yes, basically the situation obviously came up. Can we did that? Um, obviously, was it lost to Bikishi in that crazy spot that I think was awesome. It's too crazy we did it, but you know. Mental. Yes. But um, yeah, so it's obviously, it seems to be everyone just in wrestling and Malians on SmackDown. When they've lost, they don't take it well. Okay? So he does what he always does, Mark Henry. And just beats people up. Goes backstage, beats people up, throwing away security, staff members, all kinds of stuff. And I like the idea that basically Mick, Mick Foley's like come on, trying to stop him type situation. And he's like saying, like, I, I don't know if it's like, I've got like, I like the idea of like maybe like he's, because he's, Doing, he likes chucking people off stages, right? Mm. He done it with Kishi. Mm. So maybe he picks up like a staff member, goes on the edge of the stage and just sits there again. And Mick's like, if you throw him, you're out of the King of the Ring. You're done. You're done, no. right? King Mark. And, but because, because, because he's so filled with rage, he does it. <gasps> Mark. I love, I love, I love, you got like you got like you got like a soap drama shocking is it no <laughs> don't do it but, but no, um, I mean yeah, yeah this is a good way to take Mark out of the King of the Ring uh, and sort of add a little bit of heat to Mark actually getting him a, 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 an, an enemy in the general manager that's never a good thing never a good thing and a really good segment wow I'm, I'm shocked I got that obviously I was expecting that I, I put Mick because it just yeah, obviously you're going to do that. Only thing makes sense. Yeah, nine five. Wow, like with the opening segment and then this one, pretty good. Pretty good. Right, let's go to the main ring then. So, if Mark Henry's not in the King of the Ring, who is Lance Storm's opponent? Well, say hello oh, no. to CM Punk, seventy one, and look at that finish. Yes, and I just have to think there. Like, I literally, for one second, just for like, thought, wait, we didn't make a mistake. Oh, yeah, I did do that. So did I. I did do that. So did <laughs> so, I. Oh, because <laughs> oh, it helped me so many times. Anyway, but no, this is not actually, this wasn't a mistake. It actually is a thing. But 71, wow. Like, you got to be honest, the way Lance Storm's gone from to now that he can, he's pretty much like, what, 70, is that 78 I see there? I mean, I feel like you've got a book a segment where Stone Cold goes up, goes up to Landstorm and apologises and says, you know what, you've proven you're anything but boring, kid. I know, I was thinking that. And maybe that might happen. We'll find out, obviously, maybe soon. But anyway, but yes, this kind of, um, as you said, at the start, the start of the match, obviously, Mick takes the mic and says, okay, pick next opponent and obviously pick CM Punk. Because obviously, he might not like what he does, but he's respect, he, he, he yeah, respects definitely. what he does in the ring. So, um, yeah, and the kind of end of the match, kind of, um, it looks like Landstorm's going to get a win. And I, I, I mean, I like the idea of like maybe Triple H coming from the crowd, maybe hitting him with something or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of um, dazes Landstorm. Um, like, let's say a chair, let's say a chair, without the ref looking. And then CM Punk just either just go, what, because of roll up or I like the idea of just like just going for the pin, gets the win. So Landstorm's out of King of the Ring, CM Punk's into the, as I guess, semi finals at this point. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think. Um, I think it makes sense. It's good. It continues on a lot of stories. And yeah, but 71, I'm actually really happy with that. Very, Very proud good. of that one. Very good. So from one hard fought contest to another, because backstage for 70, wow, we have an arm wrestling match between the Dudleys 
and the School of Hard Knocks. Yes, I know how it sounds. And I know, um, I think, obviously, off, off recording, Carl was saying, why do it in the wing? Because no one wants to see that in the wing. But, I mean, for me, it's just the idea of, obviously, we've got two, obviously, the School Hard Knocks, you cannot have a name like that without going, well, we're, like, we're big guys, hard men type, type situation. And then the Dudleys, basically, by the way, you can see being that kind of attitude as well. So, and I like, like the idea of like, back, like backstage or they're like, they've gone to like a, um, they at a bar or something like that, something like that. And they're just like, you know what? Yeah. We can do a competition of like, a competition of who is the better men, you know, that kind of stuff. And I thought, I'm Wessel. It's pretty much what I do anyway. It's quite simple. I've put, um, it's basically like, and I was and, and um, Harker Holly wins. Because if there was that, wouldn't he win that? It's Harker Holly, wouldn't it? I mean, Hardcore Holly is a, He's a tough dude. He's a tough dude. Seventy though, he's mad, mad for it's that. Of, it's because of Rhino. It's got to be clearly Rhino. Rhino's the star. I mean, I'm one hundred percent. We believe in Rhino. Hashtag there you go. Hashtag it. Right uh, backstage, Shelton Benjamin. What is this? Shelton um, Benjamin isn't happy with Paul Heyman. Have you noticed the um, the um, the situation here? That everyone's got better when mixing it. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> All right, so basically, as you could probably guess, um, obviously, um, I like the idea that basically Shelton's like to Paul, like, why am I not on the King of the Ring? Why am I not in it? Obviously, obviously, we haven't got the brackets out yet, but let's put it across that, yeah, he's not in it, right? Because obviously, if he wasn't in the card in real life, like, if, if you saw my, my bracket and he wasn't in it, you would be furious, right? Mm. So why not punish him? I am like? you furious. But I've got it's, it's still line purposes, so I kind of get away with it. But um, but yeah, so obviously Paul Heyman's like kind of like doing what Paul Heyman does well, trying to talk his way out of it, saying, "Well, you know, it's not my fault. I didn't, and obviously I didn't, I didn't do anything. I try and best, but like, and Mick Foley comes in, going, like, you know, sit, sitting there, um, saying, "No, I stopped you from being in it," and, and obviously he's fuming, and basically Mick Foley's going. I think I think you've been focusing a bit too much on singles competition, Shelton. I think you forget your tag team champion. So I, I like the idea of saying, and we, and I think you you got to start defending those titles instead of just focusing on other things. Because this tag team division, since you've been champions, has been up to the quality the standard that we would hope when you became champions. So that's going to change tonight because for the next four weeks, every 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 week you're going to defend those tag team titles against. Any team I, I choose fit, like I choose. And um, yeah, and um, the joke is, I think whatever I called this is, Mix basically laid down the saying, yeah, I need to fix this. So he's coming in basically saying, yeah, they've tagged into fouls being defended. So you need to focus on that and not your singles career type situation. So, so, yeah. So, I mean, we're calling it Mick Fixes Tag Team Wrestling. Another way you could call it is Mick Holds Shelton Down. Just saying. Just saying. Maybe, maybe. Oh, I 100. mean, it's a great segment. Let's see if the next segment can do the same because Edge is in the ring. It's close. It's close. Almost. <laughs> wow. I've got to be honest, I'm pretty happy. Like, they're getting good segments here. Um, yeah, so obviously, where I put this is basically Edge, Edge comes to the ring. Starting off asking, like, you know, uh, it's kind of, um, yeah, he looks disappointed. He, he, he kind of cheated. He kind of went a bit over the board in the match, but he tried everything, but he couldn't get the win. So he wants Eddie to come out. So it's like, congratulate him. You know, he, you beat me fair and square. You're the better man. And then obviously Eddie comes out kind of happy, you know, happy facing him, happy beating him. I was on a face you knew. We should do it again one time. And then... I mean, I, I'm still a bit confused. Like, should I do this, the situation of like Edge walks off and then kind of Eddie suggests this or the other way around? But what I'm basically trying to set up is the idea that basically one of them going, you know what? Yeah, maybe we should do it next time. Maybe we should do it again at King of the Ring, but we should face each other one more time. And I, I think I like the idea of Edge maybe thinking, okay, okay. If you want to face if you want to face me, I've got to pick the match, and I'm not going to tease tease this one. I'm just going to put it out there. What what match you got? King of the Wing. What kind of match always shows endurance and who's the better man? Well, I, I'm not going to put a cliffhanger here. An Iron Man match. 
obviously the crowd uh, put the crowd goes wild, and I think Ed, uh, was it Eddie's going like you know she, kind of you know Eddie's what Eddie does kind of goes around look at the crowd, kind of like you know should I should I take this match, and then he smiles and shakes his hand, and yeah the match is set. I am in. That's it. So I want to say I am in two feet right in. Happy days. Why, why, te- why tease it? Like let's just why go straight it? for it. Okay. But there will be two title matches tonight. One of them, or we already know, the United States Championship on the line. But we know the tag team title is going to be on the line. Who are the lucky tag team that's that's been chosen? Val Venus and Steve Viva. How has he got a 79 out of these two? Honestly, put the world title on McFoley. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um... Mick, all you have to put, all you have to put is Mick Foley in there, when you, and he just, you know, changed everything. Um, basically, um, the way I've done this is basically he's gone. He's basically he's trying to build it like literally single handedly going in the back and trying to put teams together or trying to find people that want to be teams, right? So I just like the idea that just like he's trying to build that kind of situation, and um, yeah, uh, and he said he got you guys. I see what you've done. I like I like what you've done last couple of years. You've gone through a lot of stuff. Do you know what? If I'm going to start this new revolution in the tag division, let's give you guys the first shot. See what happens. You know, and they're like, they're obviously they're like, they haven't had a match in ages, but like, yeah, sure. Okay, go for it. Right. So, I mean, I love the meta sort of, oh yeah, I've, I've let the tag division slip. I don't really have a tag division. Let's blame it on Mick. It's Mick's fault. Well, to be fair, Mick is like my, like, you know, Your avatar, basically yeah. me, you know, yeah. Honestly, so. ridiculous. But, look, you never know. In these situations, surprises can happen. Can Val Venus and Stevie Richards become the new WWE Tag Team Champions? Your winners and... Stu? And still, WWE uh, Tag Team Champions in... Uh, well, wow. Sh- Shelton Benjamin, you are a god. So sorry, I just I'm just I'm just shocked. Like I thought I'd be like sixty at least, like a mid sixty, but Yeah, but you've got to forget the world's greatest tag team are good. They're good. Well the name gives it away, doesn't it? Yeah. But um yeah, I don't But anyway, yeah, this is nothing we crazy. Obviously yeah, the Shane Benjamin wins with a T was it was it Frog Lip? That's a cool finish, but I just put T bone on Super yeah, that's a, I mean Leapfrog stun gun's even better. But take it. That's a great it's a, that's a great that's a better finish, I go yeah. for that. But um but yeah, nothing really crazy. It just I think um I like as you said, it's like, yeah, I've I've just I met a way to try and, you know, do something detectively that I think is quite cool. So but seventy one out of that I'm very happy with that. Let's focus on the King of the Ring again. One man who's won it before is Billy Gunn. He is involved in a King of the Ring tonight on the SmackDown side of the bracket. And he knows he's got a mystery opponent. We're going to have a Billy Gunn promo for a 65. Not as terrible as it should be, because it's Billy Gunn, remember? Yeah, I wasn't going to expect him to get like high scores, is it? But um, yeah, I I mean, I'm, there's some meta jokes in here because I'm t- I'm sitting there sit- with these promos saying, it changed my life. And I'm like, well, yeah, it did kind of change your life, but not <laughs> for the better. <laughs> when it comes to the king, he won the king of the wing, right? But it was possibly his big push, didn't work, did it? So let's pretend that it did, like it was the best thing that happened to him type thing. <laughs> Right, that doesn't care, and it's like he's going to win it again. And it's going to start tonight. He doesn't care who the opponent is. He's going to win it. Well, so. the mystery opponent. Dun, 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 dun. It's not the Ghostbusters. It kind of sounds like the Ghostbusters at the start. Yeah, clever, yeah. It does. It's Kurt Angle. He's back. He's improved. He's new and improved. It's the King of the Ring. But Billy Gunn might be a step too far for Kurt Angle, right, Stu? Maybe, or, or. maybe not. Maybe not. Kurt Angle wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, good, 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 good match. Kurt Angle, 92. Very good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I wasn't expecting anything crazy there. I mean, um, again, it's the per, per, the point of it is that, yeah, the um, Kurt's back. You need to show that it's a different Kurt, and you've got to show that this was a, a Kurt that means business. So the kind of situation here is like he's more, he's more intense. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he, we're not talking about like you know Kurt just like when he's like literally trying to he, he's so intense he looks like he's trying to actually break some people's you know limbs you know proper like he's he's left he's been away for a month and he's just basically 
He's um, he's changed everything about his look and everything about his attitude, and he's just really intense. So whoever's facing him should be really scared at this point. But um, yeah, pretty much it's supposed to put across this as new and improved cut. And for an 82 against Billy Gunn, that's pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Kurt Angle might be the new favourite for the King of the Ring. Now, former King of the Ring, Triple H, cuts a promo on the United States champion Rob Van Dam ahead of the main event when he's interrupted by an old foe for a 96. Yeah, of course. Steve Austin. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I just... Um, I don't know. It's just this one I kind of just basically asked her about. Because obviously, why did he attack Lance Storm? And he said... And he's saying, well, he's kind of like, he doesn't talk about it. You know, like someone asked that question, mm. he just ignores it. He's like, anyway. But yes, yeah, so like tonight's going to be, I'm going to win the, going to have gold around my race. I'm going to, going to make that title, elevate it like the way that I did the, the world title. Mm. Nothing to, you know, I've he's wasted it type stuff. You know, Triple H's is ego, it's usual stuff. But I like the way Stone, uh, Stone Cold comes in, um, kind of so comes in saying, I know what you're going to try and do tonight. You're going to try and use every trick in the book to try and win this match. But I'm just here to warn you. I'll keep an eye on you. And you won't be getting away. And if you do anything like, try anything like that tonight, you will regret it. Big, big warning from the Rattlesnake. 96. Let's see what the match does. It's for the United States Heavyweight Championship. Big match, Triple H Van Damme. If yeah, there's just, one man who could take the title off him, it might just be Triple H. Stu, your winner. And still United States champion in RVD from uh, Distraction. Or is it put, definitely put it in there, good. Uh, distraction from, as you guess, his, uh, his nemesis, Lance Storm. Questions on this. 90 performances each, which is good. An 84, what's brought it down? Probably something to do with the storyline stuff again, but... Inconsistency from both men, and that's it. Harsh. Harsh. Yeah, I just can't get a break with, um, like, 90 stuff. I mean, it, it, it probably means I'm not going to... Might happen, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the funny... The, the, the way I put this match is um, Triple H is his finisher as well, and through the match, LVD kicks out. He tries, obviously, this really infuriates Triple H. He goes to go and get the chair. Obviously, it seems to be his go-to weapon at the moment, not the sledgehammer, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but then he stopped. He just goes and get it, and then he's just about to use it. And then on the apron, you've got Lance Storm holding holding the chair. Takes it away from him. Obviously, then turn, he, he, Triple H looks shocked, turns around. I like this one. I think you'll find nice. Is You would think, what would RVD do when he kick you in the face type thing? Mm. No, he hits, him, he hits a stunner on him. You know, hits a stunner on uh, Triple H just because I think, well, if you've got Stunner with Austin, you're going to hit a stunner with someone because he's teaching you how to use it yeah. properly. And then he, he's out, so he goes to the top, hits the frog splash. One, two, three, retains his title. But I, I, one thing I want to point out, this game's got to start realising that the Van Damenea is not a finisher. It's not a finisher. We're going to change that in a minute. I'm fed up with it. We're going to change it. Yeah. 84 then. That's the end of the show. Um Oh, right, you did have quite. You did have a little bit of a segment. We couldn't fit it in. Do you want to talk about? Yeah, it? but I, I just thought it's, it's now a special, special situation. Lance Storm's on the uh, going up the ramp, really happy. Like you know, finally, like yeah, you did it to me. I did, you know, tried. This cost you a match. Like it cost me a match. And then you just got Triple H fuming, and it's just that's how you, that's. And it's like if you're gonna look camera angles, it's like the camera's looking at him. Like why why did he go off the air? Like yeah, Triple H is. You can't. He, he's just. This guy keeps getting in his way. Just keeps getting in his way. Bad move, Lance Storm. Right then, 84 in the main event. Smackdown, 94 to beat. Let's see what it's can do. 89, 89 would be yeah. pretty good, I think, with this show. Let's find out. A 92, that's very good. Oh, I'm actually really happy. This. At least it's close, you know. I was, I was, because uh, um, I think that's the thing at the moment. It's just, it doesn't bother me too much. Like, you were little, like, Obviously, congratulations one this week as well, um, but um, it's not like it's like up on the night like it's like a thrashing. It's just it's little margins, tiny yeah. margins that you just at the moment you're pulling off that makes me feel a bit better because it means that at some point, it's similar to you, I guess, one point it's just going to click. It will again. I just feel and like I've got a bit more of a stacked main event scene at the moment. That's the difference, genuinely. That is it's just like, the difference between the two shows right now. But but to be fair, like we're both getting, you've got a night four, I've got a night two. It's just. It's a bit crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. tiny differences. Tiny differences. But Monday yeah. Night Raw wins number one. King of the Ring 
come to papa. That's all I'm going to say. Let's see what happens next week, shall we? He wins one, and then there he goes, goes his head. <laughs> okay, good week. Good week. Particularly on the Raw side, a very good show. I knew it should do well with that main event, which was actually a little disappointed. I'm surprised I'm saying that. We got a 94, and I'm a little bit disappointed. But we were carried by great segments. Great segments. The star power right now on Raw is through the roof. The early struggles we had have been made worth it now because we are flying with the stars like Taker, Goldberg, uh, Brock, Shawn Michaels, Cena, Savage, JBL, Batista, Flair, Orton. There are stars everywhere you look and it is good to see. If you like the video, make sure you drop a like on it. If you are happy we're back, drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel for a whole lot more and we'll be back on Wednesday. We'll be back on Wednesday Hopefully. If we're not, then I apologise. We'll be doing Smackdown live on the stream because we've missed out Smackdown. Until then, peace.